It's the takeover. It's the takeover right here on CBJ Radio. We're always bringing you the coolest artists on Wednesday nights, and tonight's no different. South Dakota hard rock band Core. Their debut album came out in 2007. Their current album, Broken Hearted Savior, originally came out in 2015, but they released a deluxe edition with the original 11 tracks stripped down acoustic style back in 2019. The current single and video is out now for Daydream Junkie. We're stoked to have guitarist, vocalist Jeremy, and bassist Arthur from Core on the show. First, guys, thanks for coming on. Hey, man, right. thanks for having us. Yeah. Wow. 07. I think on, on Jeremy's page, he said this thing started in like 03 or something. How did it get going? Um. Yeah, 03. This month actually marks uh, 20 years of, of yeah. Core, so... Yeah. Wow. Um, so kind of how the band started was I started it without a band. <laughs> um, I was playing with uh, some really talented musicians at the time that um, really were more interested in just doing like cover bands and playing dive bars and stuff like that, but um, never really had the nerve to really go out and do any shows. Um, I had songs that I thought were pretty solid. So I, on my own, put together a five song demo um, that those five songs ended up on the initial, um, the, the first core CD. But um, after recording those songs, playing it to the guys I was playing with at the time, they all loved it. Uh, were terrified about the idea of going out and playing original music. So I just put some ads up on some chat boards and stuff like that, looking for musicians throughout the Midwest. Um, and that was how the earliest, uh, earliest lineup of the band came to be. But the music came before the actual band. Yeah. Well, Arthur, you were from Minnesota. How long have you been in the band? Oh, geez. Uh, what, seven years now? Seven, eight. Seven, eight, yeah. I don't know. So quite um, a while. Long enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, long enough. On your guys' Facebook page, Arthur's tagged in it. What the hell is that black box in the picture? Black box in the picture? It says, like, early Santa present or secret Santa oh, for Arthur. What the hell yeah, is that? So, um, so I'm a Christmas baby. My birthday's on Christmas. Um, and... He's got a history of giving some rather peculiar gifts. Uh, one year, I, one one year, I I got a pair of socks with the core logo on it with just my head um, that he stole from uh, my youngest daughter. Is uh, a huge BTS fan, and it drives me out of my mind because there's like seven little dudes in this band, and none of them play an instrument, but they're a band. So I always tease her, but for her birthday one year, it was like all BTS themed. So um, we. But all the merch is like overseas. So like we're crossing our fingers it actually show up and show up on time. But one of the things we got her was like um, a bag of socks that had all these little kids faces on like seven or eight pairs of socks. And he was just mesmerized by it. And I had no idea why he was so, so enamored with it until, Fucking funny as yeah, until my birthday that year. And he gives me a sock. I'm like, dude, I'm going to need a therapist for this one. But uh, the black box is um, a road case for my guitars. Oh, With okay. wheels that doubles as a stand. So you just you show up to the gig, you wheel it on there, you pull the case top off, and bam, you're, good, you're ready to very, go. Very, very nice present, completely over the top. But yeah. uh, we'll get very good use in the near future. That's what I do, over the top. Yeah, it, it, it looks nice anyway, so, so that's good. You released the album in about six months. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you re-release the album in like 2019. COVID hits. What was going through your mind? Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, kind of the Reader's Digest version of how that came to be is that it was originally released on a label in 2015. Um, some of the things that were in play when the deal was signed kind of dried up by the time the record came out. So there was a lot of stuff promotionally that never got done. Um, and I felt really strong about the material. Um, I also knew that I was going to get um, heavily involved in the world of sync licensing and like TV and film and video games and soundtracks and advertisements and stuff like that. So there's a revision clause in most record deals where the label will own your master for a certain amount of time all the way up to forever. Um, so there was a revision clause in there where there was a window of time in which I could re-record those songs and re-release them um, on the master rights to all those songs myself so that in the event of somebody wanting to sync it in a TV show or a movie or anything like that, there wasn't going to be any legal issues. 
So that's where the idea stemmed from to, to re-release it. But because it was the same songs, even though we'd gone in and, and changed and re-recorded parts and added stuff and took stuff away, um, we didn't want to put out the exact same thing without giving fans something else to kind of sink their teeth into. So I had the wild idea of uh, doing stripped down acoustic versions of every one of these big in your face rock songs. Uh, we we released it as a double disc so that you had the both, um, which was, I mean, it started off with a bang. Um, we released it on Black Friday of 2019, which lesson learned is not the best day of the year to release a record because you're competing with like Nike and McDonald's and everybody <laughs> else's advertising budget. So yeah, um, yeah, um, we got we could response. I mean, the marketing side of it went went really really well. We got almost a million streams on YouTube from all the lyric videos and stuff that we put up there. But it's just the ad spend went through the roof because you're competing with everybody else. But we didn't care at the time because we're like we're just going to make this up when we go out and tour this record. And then Christmas came and we're booking stuff, and then shit started going south in March. We're like, oh my god, what are we going to do? Yeah, and now we have all these CDs. Yeah, so that's that's kind of how that hit. But we did stay very active, like in the live streaming and stuff like that. And for me personally, because I was at that point just getting started in the sync licensing world, that's where a lot of my energy went. Because at that point, that was about the only thing in music that you could really do on a consistent basis was was that um, and in live streaming and stuff like that. Which, I mean, that came and went as well. I still think it's a useful tool for bands to have but we haven't used it like we we did those first six seven months of covid so yeah because you guys were doing what like a weekly core deal or yep, yeah core tv yeah so at least you were staying active or or trying to yeah and as much as what you was could. cool is like i didn't expect the response that we got because we were just happy to be to be playing but I, it took that for me to realize that everybody else was isolated too. And like, there was people that would tune every week. They would be like, Hey, are you guys going to play this next time? Are you going to play this time? And it got, there was one where we just kind of like let it go. And it just, I was like, we'll be here all day if we do that. So we kind of tried to cut it down to like five to seven songs and then just give the people to tune in some input. Like what do you want us to play next week? Drop it in the comments, things like that. Um, so that was really cool. Um, like even last December, we, the last show we did last year, um, I got to meet somebody for the first time in person at a show that I had only known through our online interactions. Yeah. So that was pretty cool. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Now they can come back out. So I, I imagine a ton of shit is coming. Or, I mean, how much stuff do we have? We, we've been recording oh, yeah. all the time yes. or what? Uh, not the whole time recently. I've been right. I'm always writing. So we've been writing the whole time. Uh, but yeah, we have a ton of shit literally coming uh, starting next month, actually. Nice. Well, well actually, start, starting with our single Daydream Junkie, actually. Yeah. And now more new stuff on the way. Now, well, congratulations to Arthur, because you were just inducted, what, in the South Dakota Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Yes, sir. For your sir. time with Corey Thank and you. the Fireflies? That That's cool. Yeah. Did not see that one coming. Yeah, you look like you're still the only rocker that's from the band. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and yeah, that's kind of been the theme throughout the course of that band, I think. But, uh, yeah, that's, uh, it was, it was interesting. It was a lot of fun and hadn't seen or talked to a lot of those guys in years. Is this like the rock and roll hall of fame where d did you have a chance to perform or did everybody say no? Or what, what was the deal yeah, with that? No, yeah. I got to hop up on stage and, and play a song that would cycled through like all the different iterations of the band, got a chance to play and, they even spelled my name right on the plaque, so I was pretty happy about that. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Like, uh, no, really, it's me. It was a it was a really big production. It was done really well. Yeah. Well, I mean, Sioux Falls. You guys are in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. It's it's a it's a hub for bands coming through. You guys have opened for a shit ton of awesome bands. I mean, you guys are compared to Candlebox or Jeremy. You are. You opened for those guys. Seven Dust, Shine Down, Power Man, Five Thousand, Evans Blue, which is a band that I love. Uh, I mean, have you interacted with these guys? How much do you get to actually do when you're opening for them? Um, a lot of them we do. Um, some of them, I mean, they just, they don't want to be bothered, some of them. But, I mean, for yeah, us, we... The restraining order. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. Um, the, the way we've approached it, and I think this is why we've had success doing that throughout primarily the Midwest and get picked up for those big shows for those bands, 
is because we're there to do the same thing as them. I don't look at it as we're the opener. We treat it like, hey, man, we need to be just as good as these guys. or We're not going to get asked back, number one, or we're going to get booed off the stage. Um, so, yeah, I mean, some of them we've gotten to interact with more than others. but um, And some of them I've done multiple dates with. So I've gotten to know, you know, their crew or their, yeah. their management, things like that over the course of time. But the job for us is no different than it is for them. Yeah. They just get paid a lot more. <laughs> Typically. <laughs> yeah. They just get notoriety and more more free stuff than you guys do. But uh, go and check them out. It's Core. They're at coretunes.com. They're on Facebook. X, go to YouTube. Check out all their stuff. they got a ton of videos on there. Broken Hearted Syndrome is their... Uh, go get the Deluxe Edition. It's out now. Well, what's going on with your drummer? We got a new drummer, Jacob. What What's happening? Yeah, we've been with him for since about February. Yes. Somewhere in there, yeah. yeah. Prior to that, um, Adam Moragi was our drummer for about nine years. And oh, wow. he's just had some health issues and stuff that uh, a couple surgeries on his shoulder. Um, he's a veteran, so he saw some action in Desert Storm and stuff like that. So um, he just kind of stepped away without really saying goodbye <laughs> or anything. <laughs> kind of left his high and dry. But um, Secret mission. Yeah, we had, which sucked because that's right at the start of 2023 when we're getting ready to just start releasing new material, track new stuff like that. So I was like, what do we do with this now? I know there's people that want to play with us, but we had other things that were already in motion. I'm like, we got to get somebody we can get up to speed quick. Um, so we had a couple different options and he was the one that just stood out. Um, he doesn't look very imposing, but when he gets behind a kit, it's like, <laughs> something just switches with him uh so yeah he's a great fit for the music he, he's a fan of the music um ironically uh the first time he ever heard of us he was in the crowd um when we opened for alter bridge at the fair one year about seven years oh. ago he he saw us in the crowd so um arthur was playing in another like a cover band side project thing that he was doing and that drummer is insanely awesome too so that was our go-to and he's like, I can't make the time commitment. You guys have too many bigger things going on. I don't think I could make time for, but I have I a good, a yeah, I know a guy who's a drummer that would do just as good of a job. So that's kind of how we came into contact with him. Um, and he, like I said, he's been with us since February. We just haven't released anything to the public until recently. Yeah. Nice. Well, the new stuff, I mean, you guys have been around for a while. Is the sound changed? What's changed in the last, you know, since the since the last one, since Broken Hearted Syndrome to the new stuff? Well, the new stuff hasn't been released yet. Um, we just recently hooked up with Pavement. Um, so they gave us the option to either release new material on under their tutelage or um, Tim, who's in charge of A&R, is a huge fan of all the music, but specifically he was pretty adamant about Daydream Junkie. Um, but they wanted to change a little bit of the arrangement in terms of like time structure for radio and stuff like that. So we kind of went back and forth because these guys have had the benefit of hearing the new stuff, which, I mean, I think the heart of any core record is going to probably be loud guitars and in-your-face drums and bass guitar and soaring choruses for vocals and stuff like that. Because that's just how I write. And those are the songs that, that we all gravitate to, like the bands that you mentioned that we played with we're fans of those bands. Like I look up to those guys and study like how they structure songs and, and things like that. So it's very deliberate in that, but I would also like to say that from the first record to where we are today, you can listen to them from cover to cover. And there's definitely evolution from one record to the next, but at the, at the heart of all of it, it's, yeah. it's melodic hard rock. You know, it's like, um, I had a producer tell me <laughs> when we were redoing Broken Heart Syndrome, the deluxe edition, uh, a producer that I respect, otherwise I probably would have slugged him, but he's like, you write pop songs. I'm like, what? He's like, you write <laughs> pop songs. Take that back right yeah, now. Yeah, he's like, you write pop songs with like rock and metal guitars. And I just sat there for a minute, I'm like, you know what? I never thought of it like that. I can live with that, especially coming from this person who also is in the South Dakota Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as a producer. So um, his name is Mike Dresch, and he was always since the inception of this band, like the fourth member of CORE. Um, he's since closed the studio down. But um, so, I mean, when you put it in that context, that's really what they are kind of. It's like, like Shinedown would probably tell you that they write pop songs. Yeah. I don't consider Shinedown a pop band, but they're one of my idols and I freaking love them. And I'm grateful that we've gotten to play a show with them. Um, I think what I would say is if you if you scan the catalog as time goes on, 
the one word I would use to describe the evolution is more precision. I guess that's two words, but <laughs> precision is, is the name of the game. Um, it gets to the point and it punches you in the face repeatedly with it. And then it's over and it's on to the next song. Yeah. Well, and some of that has come for the, the more proficient I've become as a producer. I, it, I struggled in the beginning part of like producing that record because I had too many hats on. I was the singer, I was a guitar player, yeah. I was a songwriter, I was I was the producer. But the thing that kind of grounded me was I had to be able to just remove myself as none of those things and just be the producer. Don't be the dude in the band. Don't be the singer. Don't be the guitar player. And I got hyper focused on the relationship of each instrument in relationship to what the other ones weren't doing. So <laughs> once that happened, it was almost like I learned a new language. And the way that I could present new ideas to these guys, just we all clicked with it. So like, all right, I'm like, well, if bass is doing this, then we should probably have something to back it with like a kick drum pattern here or something like that. Um, so on the precision side of things, that's that, that's where that went. And this new batch of stuff is even a step further beyond that. But um, like I said, the label was really adamant about that song. Um, they told us that we had free reign to do what we wanted if we wanted to release um new material first but ultimately what we decided to do was let's get a bunch of momentum on on daydream get the edits that they wanted done done release that let's see what we get for traction and it's actually been really well received yeah. so far and then we've got that already kind of kindled and going for when we do release the next song probably i mean we could release it next week if we wanted to but probably yeah. the end of the year or january yeah Nice. Go check them out. They're at coretunes.com. They're on Facebook. Uh, if you go to YouTube, there's a couple different videos. There's a lyric video for Daydream Junkie. There's a deluxe edition video. There's a regular, there's all kinds of versions of Daydream Junkie out there, just like uh, Jeremy was telling you. Well, Arthur, you've been married for like a year. Is, is your wife, is she giving you shit about being a rocker? Is she still enjoying this? How's it going? That depends on the day. <laughs> <laughs> depends on how busy I've been that week. <laughs> Although I will say, uh, like, I don't know, it was probably the, the day after we released the video for the radio edit version and started hyping that, I get this message from her. Damn it. Now that song is stuck in my head. <laughs> but good job. <laughs> I'm like, uh, I'll take that. So... Um, if my wife likes it, I know it's good. Yeah. She's um, but, you know, she's very supportive. Um, every now and then I get the, so when are we going to be rich and famous? But uh, I'm like, ah. Uh, <laughs> you mean you're not? <laughs> um, so anyway. <laughs> um, but, you know, she's uh, very supportive. She knew what she was getting into when uh, she said yes. So, um, you know, let's... Uh, Every day is an adventure in my house. Yeah, that that's good. You got a little red in your hair. What what color we got in our, when, in our uh, hair? Yeah, right? a little bit of red. Just one color now. I'm trying to cut back. <laughs> yeah, it changes. <laughs> he's he's slowing down a little bit. October oh. 29th. What you guys are opening for Trapped? Yes. Yes. Where's this at? Is it in Sioux Falls? This is in Sioux Falls. Um, at a club called Biggs. Biggs. Nice. Have we played there before? Uh, ironically, we played there almost the exact same day a year ago with Trapped. Yeah. <laughs> um, we've we've played with Trapped, I think, three or four times before. They're always really good to us. Yeah. Um, fun shows, awesome dudes, and again, like I'm personally a, a big fan of, of the music, so uh, yeah. that's a plus too. Well, exactly to enjoy it all the way around. So why now, guys? Why is now the window for Core? What's going to be different? Well, the big difference is this this deal that we have with pavement um we've got starting next month we can't release it yet we've known about it for three weeks so we're all chewing our tongues off um <laughs> but we've got a major tour coming up next month in november and then we've got another major tour in december to, to close the year out so um i mean i wish yeah. i could say who it was with but yeah. it's not it's two it's two different tours two different bands but stay um, tuned though and you'll find out yeah massive um logistically it's it's farther out well the the november one is farther out than we've ever gone before um i can say it's in florida but that's about all i can say about that um beyond that so logistically trying to figure out how to get because we all have in-ear monitor systems now so get all of our gear down there our merchandise us 
Drums. Drums. <laughs> like, yeah, it's like when we first got confirmed for the tour, I was like, piece of cake, we'll fly in, be in Florida for a week in shitty weather back home. This is going to rock. And I was like, oh, shit. How are we going to get gear down there? How are we going to get <laughs> merchandise down there? How do we get our stage stuff down there? Like, so, and I'm still personally kind of dealing with some of that because the routing from Sioux Falls to the first date on tour, there's no direct flights. So it's like you're going from one airport to another airport to another airport. Arthur's going to take one for the team and drive our sound guy and Jacob and himself down there. Um, our tour manager actually lives in Florida um, in St. Augustine. So he's going to just make the trek um, and, and ride with it's us throughout. Beautiful. Yeah. Right. <laughs> he's a big guy, but, um, and then he'll be with us throughout the course of that. Um, and then the plan is like the day before Thanksgiving, I'll fly back. These guys will probably be, be might even be me home because the last, the last day of tour is two days before I can get a flight out of there. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, so uh, logistics. I mean, good, pro good problems to have. Exactly, but, but logistically, still a problem to overcome. So that's yeah. all provided the drug dogs don't tag you and get the thing. <laughs> yeah, but that airport in Orlando is a freaking train wreck. Oh, uh, great! Have you ever been to that airport in Orlando? Not in years. Oh, I was there probably three years ago, and it was like a scene from Scarface. It's a fucking line all the way out to the parking lot to get in. They got drug dogs everywhere. Like really? I was working for a cartel. That's <laughs> like, this is insane. Wow. In so, Florida. That's not good. No. Huh. Yeah. No, I haven't. I've, yeah. I haven't been to Florida in a while, but that, that doesn't sound good. I've been everywhere else except there, but wow. Big things coming. So that's good, guys. Congratulations. Yeah. So pavement is on fire. I love what they're doing with the artists. They're getting you guys out there. They're tag teaming you together. They're putting bands with bigger bands. Yeah, it's 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 good. I like everything they're doing right now. Yeah, us too. And that was the whole thing is that, I mean, I'd been on a label before and having Jacob relatively new to the band, like when I saw that they were looking to expand their roster, that was a conversation I had with them. I was like, look, guys, like from a marketing standpoint, I don't know that there's much that any label can offer us that I didn't learn to do yeah. through the COVID time. But in terms of like tour support and opportunities and things like that, I don't know that I can compete with what a label like Pavement can, can bring to the table. And I said, I think if we reach out to them that they'd be interested in us. Um, is that something you guys would be willing to do? Because it's going to be a shitload of work. And they're like, Oh uh, yeah, what are you waiting for? I'm like, no, like I really, really mean it. Like, I think that they would probably be interested in us, and I'm not going to waste my time getting into that conversation if you guys aren't ready to go. Because if we do this, it's going to be all in. They're like, what are you waiting for? So I submitted, and probably about a week later, we heard back from Tim, um, and it just it snowballed from there. And like I said, he was really, really uh, adamant about Daydream. And I'm like, well, I released that already twice, actually. <laughs> so, um, but but he's like, well, we're going to redo it, though. And, and it will be fresh and it'll be punchier because you're going to chop it down a little bit. And I was like, let me see if I can even do it. And I, get, I mean, I didn't think I could do it. But once I got it, I was like, oh, this is perfect. Like, he's right. Like, this is the way we need to go. So I played it for these guys. I'm like, and it was still a tough choice for us because we have the benefit of knowing what the new music is already. But they're like, well, we've got a lot of assets for it already. They love it. So that's a good thing. Like, it's more support than we've ever had from somebody outside of the inner circle of the band before. And like what you said, I do think they're on fire. I do like what they're doing. Not just with the existing, you know, like legacy bands like Candlebox and, you know, Puddle of Mud and Parman 5000. And we've done dates with a lot of those bands way before we ever came into contact with Pavement. But the opportunities that exist and the team that we have around us right now that are pushing this this new video for Daydream Junkie out and the single itself is amazing. And we're very fortunate to have them in our corner. Yeah. Go and check them out. Core, go and follow them they're, they're, and, and keep following them because they're going to be on the road and go and see them. CoreTunes.com. They're on Facebook. Go to YouTube. Watch all of their other stuff. Guys, thanks so much for coming on. We appreciate it. Thanks for having Thank us, man. You. It's an honor. Here it is, Daydream Junkie by Core. It was Jeremy and Arthur. It's the Takeover at CBJRadio.com.